The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Herod the Tetrarch had heard about all that was being done by Jesus, and he was puzzled because some people were saying that John had risen from the dead, others that Elijah had appeared, had reappeared. Still others, that one of the ancient prophets had come back to life. But Herod said, John, I beheaded him. So who is this I hear such reports about? And he was anxious to see Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today I would like to talk about the nothingness of life. Our first reading makes it clear that um, everything in life is vanity. Life, as you know, is full of uncertainties. Sometimes you wake up in the morning only to discover that everything you have has gone like it happened in Beirut a few months ago, with some people losing everything they have worked for their whole life. And other times you wake up to only to discover that all that, all, everything you have is still there, but have lost its value. Just like we experienced at the beginning of the pandemic, that even with our money, we can't even buy toilet papers. We can't travel to wherever we want with our best cars, with our aeroplanes, with the best clothes we have. We can't dress out to go to public. We can't even go to where we like. We can't even buy what we want. And there are other times we don't, we don't, you go to sleep, people go to sleep, and they don't even wake up at all. The life itself is gone. So life is full of uncertainties. The only permanent thing in life, as we know, is change. It was Socrates, one of the ancient uh, Greek philosophers, who said that unreflected life is not worth living. Unreflected life is unworth living. Today, our first reading reflects, call us to reflect back on our life and see what is the most important thing in this life. It's a call to ponder on the meaning and the purpose of life. I asked you here a few weeks, a few months ago, drawing your attention to that basic catechism question. Who made you? And why did God made you? These are the fundamental questions that we need to ask ourselves every day. Why do I, who made me? How do I come to be? And what is the purpose of my existence? In our first reading today, we are told that everything is vanity. The sun rises, it sets, it comes back again. The wind blows, the river flows into the sea. The eye keeps watching and never gets filled. The ear keeps hearing and never gets filled and all of that. So what is the purpose of life and what is the most important thing in this life? Sometimes our pride, our desires, or our abuse of power can lead us to search for things that are meaningless. And we had a clear example today in our, in our gospel reading, the second reading. When Herod heard about Jesus, he was troubled. Herod, as we know, had all the powers, he had all the money at his time, and he wanted to get the best out of life. But what did he find? He was lured into a momentary lapse of having a feeling or this false sense that he can, he can acquire happiness from, from pleasure. And he took, he, he married his brother's wife. 
And then he was so proud that even when he made that careless promise to that little girl under the influence of alcohol, realizing the danger and the consequence and the devastating effect of that promise, his pride wouldn't let him change his mind. And then in his power, in his abuse of power, he murdered, he beheaded John the Baptist, thinking that all this will make him happy, it will bring him fulfillment, it will give him the peace he deserved, only to discover that it was full, his life was now full of emptiness, his life was characterized by fear, and he has imprisoned his conscience forever. That was why when he heard about Jesus, he was perplexed. He wanted to know who is this man, he said. Who is this man, John the Baptist, that beheaded him? Who is this? He was anxious to see Jesus because he knows that only him can set him free, can set his conscience free from this endless prison he has put himself. Many people today have everything it takes to make life comfortable. We have all it takes to be happy. But why are we not happy? We think by getting the best house, that will make us happy. But when we achieve what we want, does that give us the desired happiness? No. Sometimes we feel maybe if we buy a certain particular kind of car, we will be happy. You have that car, does that make you happy? The answer is far from yes. What about the food we eat? What about the money we have in our bank account? All of that we think by getting them, it will make us happy. Are we really happy? Does that bring us the happiness we want? Does that bring us the inner peace? Does that bring us the fulfillment that our heart desires? The answer is still no. Then the, problem, the question becomes, what is the essence of life? What is the purpose of our being? The purpose of our being is not to acquire material wealth. It's not to rise to a power that we can control everyone. It's not to become famous across the world that everybody will be calling our name. The purpose of life is to know the way to true happiness. That way is no other person than Jesus. Who tells us in our gospel acclamation today, I am the way. I am the truth that will set you free. I am the life you are looking for. Everything in this life will pass away. The only thing that will remain is the word of God. Jesus said, heaven and earth shall pass, but my word will remain forever. If you attach yourself to the word of God, then you will live forever. God and his words are one. And we need to hold on to God's words that leads to truth. And that word of God is nothing but God himself. Let us not set our hearts on these material things. Because that makes us to focus on the unnecessary things of this life. We are not looking at the whole picture. The daily things we go through, our present predicament, will pass. We shouldn't concentrate all our energy on it. Even this pandemic will pass. Not until this happened, I have never heard that word pandemic. Never knew, not knew until when it happened, then I started hearing and making some research, and I discovered there was a worst kind of thing that happened 100 years ago, when I wasn't even born. And that time, I'm sure those who lived during the Spanish flu, they might think that was the end of the world. It was something that they, didn't, they never forgot. 100 years from now, I don't think anybody will remember what we are going through. 100 years may even be too much. Maybe 10 years from now, a lot of people will forget that we have ever passed through anything like this. So don't allow your present situation to weigh you down. You are much more than what you think. You are more than that. Don't allow the loss of job at the moment to weigh you down. You can still find another job. If God has given you a job before, God will make another provision for you. All we need is to trust. Don't, get this, don't allow everything happening around you now to push you down to that level that you give up and think that everything has completely been lost. No. These things are bound to happen. 
They are not made to destroy you. They are meant to make you stronger. Things in this life, be it material things, power, glory, where everything will pass away. The most important thing that will never pass is the word of God. And the most valuable thing on earth is the salvation of your soul. Work towards it. May God bless you. Thank you.